Welcome back to Bash Pros in episode 99 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. Tonight, you are back for the Made in Europe pay-per-view. And last time you were here, I broke my microphone. <laughs> yeah, last the ending of last episode was a little bit rushed, but it's okay, I fixed the microphone. We're back of business. After a lot of swearing and a lot of rearranging my desk, we are, we, we are good to go with more recording. But it has been a couple of weeks since you have been with us. The last time you were here was a Rev Pro episode, so let's cover the wanted you've missed since. Week 1 May's Wanted started off with a celebration for Mad Marley Quinn with Connor and with crazy Mary Dobson where it was announced that tonight at the pay-per-view we would have a cross promotion match with one of our alliance partners at WXW and that Mad Marley Quinn would be defending the NPW Women's Championship against Baby Allison. Later on in the night then we had Kip Sabian asking the crowd why why do they boo him but yet they cheer Miles came in and Miles came out ready for a fight until his British wrestling embassy cohorts held him back. Next up in an in-ring angle, Storm and Lethal mocked the injured Will Hobbs until Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli came out and said, enough is enough, time to put this to bed. The kings of wrestling will reunite at the pay-per-view. And that's the reason why we are back for this pay-per-view tonight. Later on then, after winning a match against Nicole Matthews, Crazy Mary Dobson was attacked by Raven Creed. Jake the Snake was there saying that he had warned Mary Dobson about this and that he will get his revenge. Mad Marley Quinn tried to make the save but was also laid out by Raven Creed. And then in the main event, Jonathan Grisham won a 10 man battle royal for a shot at the Intercontinental Championship at the pay per view tonight. And that match will have a mystery WXW wrestler in it also. Um, but we'll get more into that when we run down the match card. After his win, Grisham then got on the microphone and said due to an injury he wasn't able to compete in the P12. But him and Easton Reese both know that if he had been allowed to compete, he would be IC champion now and not Reese. All knows a 72 rated show. A uh, very strong battle royal, which is impressive considering there's just so many people in that and quite a lot of variables. So very happy with that. Then on to week two, May's Wanted. In the opening bout, uh, Riho and Michael Salamora were able to defeat Jimmy Hater and Martina. This led to Jimmy Hater showing her true colors and screaming at Martina after the match, then laying her out with a forearm. In a backstage promo then, Joe Henning jokes that Ricky Knight Jr. might not be able to make it to their match tonight, but after an attack from Joe two weeks ago. But Brittany Knight comes forth and says that don't worry, Ricky Knight will be in the main event tonight and we'll also see Joe at the pay-per-view for a match. Next up in the number one contendership match for the tag titles, Grizzled Young Vets defeated Aussie Open after the Velocities inadvertently distracted Mark Davies, allowing Zach Gibson to get the win. This is just the add tension, uh, obviously we know the feud is Aussie Open are trying to convince themselves that they're not annoyed about the Velocities winning the title, but the Velocities keep doing silly little things to continue to annoy them. And yeah, it's all coming to a head. And then ahead of the main event tonight, Kenny Omega comes out in his cleaner attire, playing a bit of mind games with AJ Styles. Speaking of, in the main event, Kenny Omega and Ricky Knight Jr. defeat AJ Styles and Joe Henning when AJ walks out on Joe, not wanting a piece of Kenny Omega just yet. 68 overall for that show, and we continue to have issues with AJ not being quite as good as we hoped. Um, but uh, we only really have two months of the Kenny Omega AJ feud to go, so should be grand. And then on week three, May's Wanted, the go-home show for the Made in Europe pay-per-view. Kip Sabian was able to defeat Miles Kamen one-on-one. Um, afterwards, Kip attempted to beat down Miles further until Davey Boy Smith was just like, don't fucking do it. 
<laughs> uh, uses, used his size to intimidate Kip into stopping. Next up, Crazy Mary Dobson won via DQ when Raven Creed intentionally got herself de disqualified during their match, uh, using weapons and whatnot to really try and hurt Crazy Mary Dobson. Post match, then Jake gets on the microphone and says that Mary doesn't get off that easily and that her real punishment will come at the pay per view in a no DQ match with Raven Creed. Then in our main event, Jay Lethal defeated Claudio Castagnoli after Chris Hero inadvertently cost Claudio the match. Um, just to add that kind of doubt that maybe the Kings reuniting, they have missed a step and it's not necessarily a guarantee that they're going to win at the pay per view. And post match, the heels laughed all the way up the ramp at the downed Kings of Wrestling. So that is everything you guys have missed. Let's take a look at the news and what's been happening around the world. And we've had a slew of um, retirement announcements. So firstly, Candice LeRae has announced she is retiring from active competition. A bit weird, she is signed to NXT still. Um, I imagine she'll just stay on as a manager. Maybe also a road agent. But yeah, very weird to see that. MVP also announced his retirement. Again, he's still with um, WWE. Only an occasional wrestler at the minute. So I imagine he'll stick about doing other things such as his manager, personality and road agent roles. And the last retirement announced was Rosemary. So again, kind of weird. Rosemary is currently active. Um, not overly old either. Maybe she'll drop down the occasional, but she has no other roles that she fulfills at the minute. So yeah, again, just another very weird <laughs> retirement. So next up, Billy Kay, uh, set to leave at WWE. They announced they're not renewing her contract. She could make her way to Notorious or even Rev Pro, maybe a part of the Queen of the Ring tournament, which will be happening next in game year. Obviously, super charismatic, uh, great fundamentals. Overall skills, maybe average to below average, but yeah, she might. Uh, she's Australian, you know. Um, we've if we've learned one thing recently, Australian talent is OP. So possibly you could see Billy Kay join us in the future. And it's one in, one out for WWE. Uh, they have signed Kimberly to a contract. Um, Abby Leith, I think that's what she was called in the. Or did she maybe come in for like a cup of coffee in NXT? And she left again? I can't remember exactly, but yes, she will be joining NXT. And finally, uh, one of my favorite bits of news is that we have a new company that has opened up in the Notorious Universe, Global Association of Wrestling. God, these names are dumb. Uh, G-A-W. They are a respectful wrestling product based in Canada. So similar to probably kind of old school ROH. So just kind of looking through their product for the respectful wrestling and what that entails. So, uh, no roster divide, heels and faces, stables, uh, all, nothing overly weird there. Uh, Whenever you get down to the consequences bit though, um, so, (laughs) pretty much eye candy, comedy, mayhem, car crash, hardcore, death, all penalized. You get to wrestle basic mat wrestling or that is it looks like high spots is okay so storytelling is also okay anything else nah shit we don't want it here kind of sounds like what uh term terminus wrestling was yeah so it it is straight up roh like uh requires at least one steal to show and requires at least one technical master class oh my goodness and the hardcore skill will not be used in regular magic calculations that's so funny that'd be kind of boring I think to (laughs) book but hey ho I'm not booking it the AI is in terms of people I've signed I honest to god (laughs) I'm not joking I don't recognize a single person I think the guy that opened it Dan uh, Pogozo he uh, had something to do with Smash don't know if he used to be the owner currently is the owner in real life I don't know but but yeah I I don't recognize a single person here okay I know little Blay I know I know him I wish I didn't, but I know him. Oh, and I know Frank Milano. Um, He's actually a regen in this game. Yeah, he entered as Jesse Hill. uh, And then uh, he, I, because he was a regen, then he got remade into Frank Milano. So, yeah. So that is all the news done. Very weird seeing so many retirements, but could be just the game database trying to uh, 
correct itself or keep itself balanced with all the regens we've had come in recently. So let's take a look at the match card for the Made in Europe pay-per-view and the storylines leading into it. Throw your minds back, oof, like four months now, when Claudio Castagnoli debuted in Notorious Pro Wrestling, leading to a bit of jealousy from James Storm. Storm then turned heel, uh, thinking that he was being replaced by Claudio, and attacking his former friend Chris Hero in the process. While all this was going on, Jay Lethal was feuding with Will Hobbs, who rejected Jay's invitation to be his new muscle. Jay and James decided we have big problems here and banded together to get them sorted, which they kind of did as they have already taken out Will Hobbs from Notorious Pro Wrestling. Seeing that the heels were as dangerous as ev ever, Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli decided that they needed to do something they hadn't done in a long time and that was partner together to reform the kings of wrestling and take on Jay Lethal and Jim Storm which is happening tonight. During the P12 Joe Henning was on a bit of a downward trajectory in his career until Tully Blanchard appeared and decided to manage him at Tess's behest. Joe then decided to tell all the fans that there's a few names that they need to learn to put respect on in wrestling and at the top of that list is Joe Henning. A certain British family lineage in UK wrestling didn't appreciate that and the Knights, Ricky Knight Jr and Brittany Knight debuted telling Joe there's only one name in the UK that matters when it comes to wrestling and that is Knight. In a battle of the namesakes we will have Joe Henning versus Ricky Knight Jr one on one. The prestigious mind games on Aussie Open backfired whenever the velocities were added to the triple threat tag team match for the tag titles at the Fear No Man pay per view. How did it backfire? By the Velocities getting the upset pin and are the new tag team champions. Convinced that they are fluke champions, Grizzled Young Vets set out to get another chance at the titles and did so when the Velocities inadvertently cost Aussie Open the number one contender spot. So tonight we will find out what the Velocities are made out of. Are they the future of Notorious Pro Wrestling or are they paper champions? Crazy Mary Dobson turned her back on the negative influences of Jake the Snake Roberts and his little weird cult faction thing whenever her friend Mad Marley Quinn returned to Notorious Pro Wrestling. Jake vowed revenge and for a month or so he never really followed up on it until recently when Raven Creed, the unhinged Raven Creed, attacked Crazy Mary Dobson following a matchup. Jake said he was coming to get his pound of flesh, going as far to have Raven disqualify herself in a match with Mary Dobson uh, as she used a chain to choke out the crazy one. Saying that Crazy Mary Dobson wouldn't get off that easily, Jake the Snake Roberts then said that tonight at the pay per view it will be Crazy Mary Dobson versus the unhinged Raven Creed in a hardcore match. And in the first of our WXW crossover matches, new notorious pro wrestling women's champion Mad Marley Quinn will defend her women's championship against one of WXW's top female stars, Baby Allison. In this battle of the head cases, will Matt Marley Quinn be able to beat the witch bitch Allison? And in the second of our WXW crossover matches, Jonathan Grisham won a 10 man battle royal to gain a shot at Easton Reese's brand spanking new Intercontinental Championship. With one caveat that a mystery WXW star will also be participating in the match, making it a three-way. Can Jonathan Grisham live up to the claims that if he was in the P12, he would be the Intercontinental Champion and not Reese? Or will Easton Reese continue to carve an impressive path of being the very first NPW IC Champion? And just who is the WXW star coming in for the match? All of these will be answered tonight. And in our main event, after months of being attacked by a hooded figure, it was revealed that AJ Styles was the one assaulting Kenny Omega, getting retribution for being usurped out of the Bullet Club all those years ago. Omega has been furious and has wanted AJ Styles one on one, but Conor McGregor would not allow it as AJ was not a contracted 
NPW wrestler. But that all changed at the Fear No Man pay-per-view when AJ beat Pentagon Jr. to earn a notorious pro wrestling contract. And now the mind games have started as Kenny Omega isn't coming in as the best bike machine. He isn't coming in as the belt collector. He is coming in as the cleaner. The gimmick or persona or however you want to phrase it that threw AJ Styles out of the Bullet Club and out of Japan. Will AJ Styles succumb to the mind games? Or, or will Kenny Omega's reign as NPW Champion be cut short by the phenomenal one? And that is the card for the pay-per-view tonight. I'm always uh, curious, I suppose, to see how we do when we do one of these shows that's not in our home country of Ireland. You know, <clears throat> same with our Braveheart pay-per-view in Scotland. Uh, the Made in Europe pay-per-view, which might be in Germany tonight, I can't remember. But yes, um, very cool though, I do love seeing, or I do like bringing in people from other promotions, and it's cool to be able to use our Alliance loans. Uh, this is the first time I think we've done an Alliance loan in game, so always cool to do that. So, that is everything covered, so let's book the show. And we are back, coming at you from the Elmo Club. And I'm not being racist, I have German ancestry, so you can't even say anything. <laughs> uh, in Germany, it is the Made in Europe pay-per-view. Oh, flip, I forgot the other match under the pre-show. Two seconds. Okay, sorry, yeah, now we're back properly. Um, yeah, in terms of booking the show, it all fit pretty much perfectly. Um, I j literally hit the 115-minute limit. Uh, so, yeah, um quite excited to see how it goes um, but I am also very nervous because obviously we are in uh, Europe so yeah we'll just have to see so backstage pre-show promo baby Allison is there and she does all her spooky shenanigans and ends up uh, scaring Jen Louise 48 rated segment which is okay then on a pre-show match uh, Oday Tai defeated Rachel Elrain and Nicole Matthews um, with the Joshi killer. Uh, Jamie a 54, B a 51, Nicole a 51 and Rachel a 40. All in all 52 which is good. Just to give B Priestley uh, a bit of momentum before she starts her feud. Uh, she should be coming in in the next month or so. Actually in the next couple of weeks I think uh, to join the Martina Jimmy Hater feud. Then on to the main show. Uh, the Velocities defeat Grizzled Young Vets in 1745. Making it defense number one for the Velocities. Uh, Zach a 62, James a 57, Jude a 63, and Paris a 63. All in all 64, which is great. The Velocities still continue to be absolutely phenomenal. I, I just would so, like I just didn't expect it. <laughs> uh, we did go for the storytelling uh, special instruction in this match, and that was just due to the fact that uh, the, the the three theme would be that Grizzle Young Vets keep telling the Velocities they haven't, they don't deserve this, they haven't earned it. But yet the Velocities still end up getting the win, and that's going to be the Velocities theme throughout this storyline. Is that you know, yes, it was a fluke win, but they're not a bad team, and they keep winning, and them proving that they are real championship material. Next up then is superb match. Ricky Knight Jr. defeats Joe Henning in, we'll say, 15 minutes with the Yakuza kick. Joe 57, Ricky uh, 59, and overall a 61, which is great. Um, yeah, so some good managerial bonuses for Brittany, which helped push this over into the 60s. But yeah, good performances from both guys. Uh, definitely kind of both are upper mid card, mid card talent, absolutely. And with this storyline, you know, uh, Cody Rhodes will debut pretty soon after this now and probably the next pay-per-view will maybe have a triple threat next up we find a bunch of tag teams at ringside including including kings of the north and aussie open all ready to see the reunion of the kings of wrestling conor mcgregor comes out and introduces the returning kings of wrestling and they make their entrance this was just an excuse to get a Conor McGregor promo on. I'm not even going to lie. And then the match itself. In a match that had superb wrestling and great heat, Kings of Wrestling defeated Jay Lethal and James Storm um, with the reign supreme. James Storm was the weak link, so take a look at the breakdown. Hero was 65, Claudio was 67, James a 51, Lethal a 66, and a tag bonus for the Kings of Wrestling. All in all, 64. Yeah, James was a bit out of his depth, um, but still a great, great score. Man, that's, that's really good scores from the Kings. 
Holy crap. Guess, guess who our future tag champs are going to be. <laughs> Next up then. In a bout that had great heat and decent wrestling, Mad Marley Quinn defeated Baby Allison in 1759. Uh, making that defense number one for Marley Quinn. Baby Allison got a 46, which is okay, and Mad Marley Quinn got a 54, which is good. Um, but there was a lack of psychology um, on display from both women. Uh, so it did drag in the middle, leading to a 42, which is not great. It's okay, but like, that's close to dropping down to the 30s, and that's not good. <laughs> Next up, Jonathan Grisham and Eason Reese are in the ring whenever the mystery opponent is revealed, and it is Damak. Uh, so Damak is famous, probably mostly famous, for, for American audiences as a part of the Cruiserweight Classic, but he is, uh, I wouldn't say he's a top star of WXW, but he's a featured star of WXW. That's 48 rated segment, which is okay. Then on to the match itself, in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Reese defeated Damak and Grisham in 1526 when he pinned Damak after a powerbomb, making it defence number one for Easton Reese. Grisham carried the match, I'm not surprised. Damak a 52, which is good. Uh, Grisham of 65, which is good, and Reese of 50, which is good. All in all, 61, which is great. So yeah, Reese again, we know he's not the best, um, but that's an alright score for him. Usually he does kind of drop down to the 40s, which is not brilliant. But a 50 is definitely an alright score. Demac, he held his own, absolutely. 52 is, again, what we want our mid-cards or upper mid-cards to be at, so happy enough with that. And Grisham just doing Jonathan Grisham things and being fantastic at 65. Next up in a bite that had great heat and good wrestling, Raven Creed defeated Crazy Mary Dobson uh, in 1448 with a neck breaker. <laughs> Mary Dobson had a 59 and Raven Creed had a 46, all in all a 58. Okay, let's unpack that. Um, that's very good for Mary Dobson and she definitely pulled a good match out of Raven Creed, but that's not very good from Raven Creed. 46 is not great, especially for someone who's going to be going into a title match soon. Eesh. Okay. Okay. So Raven Creed will probably not be the, the greatest substitution uh, for Crazy Mary Dobson as a heel, but um, she will be a perfectly fine mid Carter. And in our main event, Kenny Omega defeated AJ Styles. In 2311, uh, making that defense number three for Kenny Omega. AJ a 56, which is good, and Kenny Omega a 76, which is awesome. All in all, a 71, which is awesome. I definitely feel like once this feud with Kenny Omega is done, AJ is probably gonna drop down to a mid card role, upper mid card, mid card role. Uh, he's definitely scoring kind of high 50s, which is perfectly fine, but definitely we want more from our main eventers. But he can still have a lot of good matches, I think, in that kind of upper mid card role. And I do plan to have him feud with Michael Oku actually when he, uh, when Michael Oku first comes up as like the best of British wrestling versus someone he's considered the best in the world. So post match, then Kenny Omega offers AJ Styles the two sweet, and AJ considers it, and then kicks Kenny Omega square in the dick, <laughs> leaving him lying in a heap on the mat and storms off. Uh, 65 rate segment. So this is just the continue the feud next month. Uh, I'm probably going to do maybe an Iron Man match or something with them. 30 minute Iron Man. Um, I do want to do the fan suggested feud for AJ Styles versus Nick Aldis. However, can need AJ Face to do that so we might redo this segment after the next match for them at the next pay-per-view. Um, but AJ will actually accept the two sweet and turn face then. But again, I just don't know yet. But I do want AJ to be faced before he faces Nick Aldis and the Prestige. All in all 70, which is very, very good. So only one real disappointment on the card, and that is probably the women's title match. But now we know that maybe we can't have Marley Quinn go as long as we normally do. For our title matches, I usually like to let a title match go between 18 and 20 minutes. But Mad Marley Quinn doesn't have the psychology for that. So going forward, probably going to have to limit her to a 15 minute match. So... Baby Allison and Demac are gone. Uh, say they were just there for a single loan appearance. In terms of the performances, they were fine. Um, don't think I would really be bringing either of them back. Baby Allison's 48. If I were to bring her back, she would probably end up just being a jobber, if I'm honest. Demac scored about a 52, which is okay. Um, but a lot of our mid-carders 
such as Mandry, such as Kenny Williams. All of them perform better than 52. So I don't think we need to bolster our mid card anymore at the minute. So yeah, I think at the minute, don't really feel the need to bring either of them in any more than this one appearance. So that is it for another episode. Um, I don't know when you guys will be back. I actually haven't booked that far ahead yet. Since it's episode 100, maybe we'll do a special. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We do, we do a year in recap, which is kind of our special. So I don't know if it's worth doing episode 100. But yeah, damn, 100 episodes. That's kind of mental. <clears throat> I won't do a big spiel about it just yet. I'll save that for the episode itself. But yeah, thanks for the support, guys. Uh, never in my life would I thought I would ever do a series that has 100 episodes. Oh my god, I've been doing this for like 100 weeks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> But if you did enjoy this episode, do leave a like and subscribe to the Bash Bros channel. Uh, and all the things that YouTube asks me to make you do. If you have any ideas for storylines, for feuds, for tag teams, anything of that sort, do leave them in the comments and I'll try to pick it for you. One of our fans suggested storylines is happening down in Rev Pro during the Great British Tag League with Grado and Martin Kirby. And then we also have uh, the AJ Styles versus Nick Aldis one, which will be coming sooner rather than later. I just need to figure out the heel face divide. So with all my rambling out of the way, and with all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros. <laughs> <laughs>